Well, hey, everybody, this is Chris DiFurio with Keys to the Shop. Welcome to another edition of Shift Break. Today's episode is brought to you by La Marzocco, who's been making espresso machines by hand in Florence since 1927. And all along the way, they have really demonstrated their dedication to the coffee community through listening to their customers and innovating and providing the most reliable espresso machines on the market. This is why La Marzocco is loved so much the world over, and it's at the heart of some of the world's best coffee shops. Um, I know so many of us have grown up with La Marzocco as the foundation of our coffee bars. Uh, One of the examples of this kind of innovation is the KB90 espresso machine that introduced to the market straight-in locking portafilters to improve ergonomics. It has scales in the drip tray to improve the consistency of your espresso. Also, it has auto flush, which increases cleanliness and improves workflow. And that's just one example of many espresso machines that La Marzocco has that can fit the needs of your cafe. And if you need help in selecting the right equipment, then La Marzocco is available to help you do just that. All you need to do is reach out to them, info at lamarzoccousa.com. You get to talk with one of their awesome salespeople. And you can also check out their website for more information, lamarzoccousa.com. Today's episode of Shift Break is also brought to you by Espressly, who is helping you create custom branded mobile apps for your customers. Your customers love your coffee, they love you, and giving them another way to order your coffee and enjoy your experience, it just makes sense. And this is what you can do with an Espressly app because it's customized specifically for your brand to extend that experience out to the app itself. It's a no risk model because you don't pay any development fees. You get a drive through payment scanner, receipt and label printing capabilities. All the information is stored in the app and it integrates with the world's leading POS systems as well as Square. And so if you're thinking about getting a mobile app to offer your customers, then I think you really need to look into Espressly. So go find out more information and get the project started today over at Espressly.co. That's Espressly.co. Okay, everybody. So today I wanted to talk about irresponsible encouragement. And uh, that sounds kind of interesting, uh, I think, um, because you would assume that encouragement is a very um, loving and always positive. And so you want to encourage, 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 right? Um, But there is a a version of encouragement that I think is irresponsible, and it has a lot to do with the kind of encouragement and affirmation we get from people around us that's not really based in reality. It's almost just based on loyalty. It's almost, it's it's not really telling the truth. We have a, a shift break called Don't Lie, and it's all about how trainers will do this um, almost reflexively, they'll start praising bad work as a way to try to encourage somebody. And I, I find it troubling that we reach for a lie in order to make somebody feel good as if the one is negated by the other, when in fact you're just going to have to deal with walking back the encouragement that you gave them um, that was false encouragement. And in the similar way, when people are starting a coffee bar, when you're getting on that journey of opening up a, a space, a lot of what you have around you and, and what you seek out, in fact, um, through support groups or just, you know, we're kind of geared to do this with our Facebook friends and et cetera. It's just the way society is today. We live in our own personal echo chambers and people will gas us up and they'll tell us that we should do this and you're so great at um, you know, coffee when I have cappuccinos in your living room and you should do this for the community. We don't have a coffee shop. And there's a whole episode about you know five reasons, five bad reasons to open a coffee shop. You should definitely listen to that. But underlying a lot of this is this subconscious um, effort, this campaign that we are kind of constantly on to try to acquire for ourselves only the positive things about what we're doing. And in a way, it's almost like you imagine uh, the friends and family of people who went to American Idol auditions, uh, especially the early years. They don't show it on the show anymore, which is, I think, unfortunate because it was kind of fun to to watch people completely bomb. Um, that's just me. I'm just, I guess I'm a cruel guy. But 
when you watch the early uh, American Idol, you get like 15 solid minutes of people completely embarrassing themselves and being just flabbergasted that the judges thought that they were bad and everybody says that I'm a good singer. And you think, and I think, who is this everybody? To your mom, your dad, your cousins, your friends? And is it the same scenario as the trainer who says to somebody with terrible latte art, like, oh, look at that, you're doing so good. Um, in a similar way, entrepreneurially, uh, it's a mouthful, you can easily acquire for yourself a lot of yes people, right? Right? People around you that are just going to be like, oh, you should totally do that, or that, lo- that looks totally cute, and um, this is going to be such a success, and this town needs this, and you're going to do great. And all the while, I think for most of us, we kind of know that, one, they don't know enough about the industry to actually tell you w- that what you're doing is probably not going to work. So they almost can't say anything else. And we know this, but we receive it and we allow it to um, sort of, in an unbalanced way, allow us to move forward without having as much focus on the check that we're feeling about what we're doing. If we feel uneasy, we feel like we need to get out of that uneasy feeling. And sometimes encouragement, irresponsibly applied, will allow us to get over that uneasy feeling when in fact, instead of the encouragement, we needed to actually dig down deep into the mud a little bit more. And yeah, you know what? It might mean that you don't open the coffee shop. It might mean that you don't open on time and you just take a bit longer to do it. Or you restructure the way that you are going to do it, right? Um, if you're already in operation, then it might mean just switching the way you've done things into a better uh, way that is uncomfortable but is right. But the only way to get there is to uh, actually work at counterbalancing this natural default we have to both encourage people um, in an irresponsible way and receive this kind of uh, baseless affirmation as though it is a stamp of approval that should cover all of our worries and get us out of uh, doing due diligence um, and soul searching and becoming self-aware and et cetera. So what you end up seeing is a lot of people far down the line uh, in, in opening their coffee bars, but are wildly unprepared. They have been um, gassed up and encouraged and affirmed by people who are either invested into them uh, relationally and can't really offer that much critique, or people who are have an interest in selling them something like equipment or something like that, where you know, yeah, I'll sell you equipment. And, you know, this is this is what we do, and I'll sell you syrups and I'll sell you product and and, and coffee, and the hard conversations just never seem to happen. This is one of those hard things that happens in conversations with consulting where you you do have to have heart-to-hearts often because, honestly, I can't think of any other relationship within starting a coffee bar when you're going to have an opportunity to have uh, different aspects of your business explored deeply and honestly at a gut level without it just being focused on a transaction. Again, it's just like a sale of a product and we're just going to move on from there. But meanwhile, the red flags are still in the cafe. And we're not giving them any time to be addressed. You know, the, the way that you treat your staff might become more and more apparent that it's not good the closer you get to opening. And you don't necessarily have anybody in your life that's going to call you on that. And so what ends up happening is you gloss over it. You excuse it. Somebody else excuses it. And then it metastasizes and it really sinks your your cafe, but not in a way that you understand. So you don't blame it on that. You blame it on fate. You blame it on traffic or, you know, the unreliability of, of staff these days. Uh, what I'm really trying to say here is that as encouraging as the people around you can be, be careful that you're not just surrounding yourself with false affirmation, irresponsible encouragement, 
because it might be uncomfortable to talk about certain things. And it's hard to find people that will actually tell you the truth and are qualified to tell you the truth. Um, if you're in a peer group uh, of people, then you should really ask for the truth and give all you know uh, the details of a situation so that people can make an assessment and don't just accept encouragement and positive responses. Accept it all, okay? You know, we talked about accepting critique and being offended by critique um, a couple weeks ago or a week ago, and <laughs> the same thing, you know? We, we get so offended by it because we're just not conditioned to, you know, have people tell us the truth. And, you know, that's not how we grow. It's certainly not how we start good businesses. There are so many people out there who run coffee bars right now and are struggling, and all other people under them are struggling with them. And they should never have opened the coffee bar. They should never have done that. And it's not helping them. They're not having a great life. The people under them are not having a great life. But they got as far as they did, not based on a good decision, but based on an industry that just affirms people all the way up to this, this height. And then we see them fall and wonder why. And I think this is partially to blame. So let's make a commitment to not engage in any kind of irresponsible encouragement. Um, let's make sure that we're offering uh, useful critique. We don't have to be harsh. You don't have to be rude when doing it. But for the person's benefit and for the industry's benefit, truth needs to be told and talked about a lot more than it actually is. And if you're the one who's receiving a lot of encouragement and affirmation, etc., I'm not saying that you don't receive some of that, but at the same time, I would be skeptical and I would make sure to pursue um, getting feedback that is substantive, honest, and it's not just about baseless affirmation. So I hope that that's helpful to you. We, we try to cover topics on the show that shed light on some of these areas that don't get talked about very often. And talking about this right now, I hope will save you some heartache and will allow you to have some better, more uh, substantive conversations around coffee and coffee bars and the like. So uh, thanks very much, everybody, for joining me on this episode. I appreciate all of you, and I will see you here next week on another edition of Shift Break from Keys to the Shop.